Hello and welcome to re-reviewed I'm Wolves TV's Mikey Burrows. With with me as ever is the Athletics Tim Spears. Sup? Oh, he's so cool. <laughs> and podcaster, comedian, and all-round good guy, uh, Mr. Tom Farry. Oh, oh, take that, Mikey. Very complimentary today. Well, I, I'm feeling in a good mood. Uh, we're going to try and go out with a bang at the end of what I'm calling season one of these re-reviews. And we're kind of going out, Tim, with a season that was kind of the rebirth of modern wolves yeah yep it's kind of nice to know that Sorry, we've got a season <laughs> yeah i was gonna say yeah. i thought god he hasn't got much to say about the matter we're gonna we've got to watch this for, we're watching an hour and 40 minutes of this <laughs> just trying to wind mikey up as always it's nice to know that we've got a happy ending, isn't it, boys? That's, it's always good to know that we're going always, somewhere. Yeah, when you walk into the room, it's, it's, always, it's always good to know. That's, so is this uh, the last season review that Wolves have put out? Uh, no, because we had the 14-15. Come on, pal. But, uh, <laughs> it all a certain, you know... CL. Probably the best one ever follows this one. <laughs> <laughs> this um, was... Um, this this yeah, this was a bit of a, a life affirming season, wasn't it? After after the apocalypse that was the season before, and it was it was it was it was exciting though. It was like it was new territory, wasn't it? We're going to some you know, I'll call them traditional, but that'll probably that'll probably become negative slurs as the season goes on. But you know, traditional football clubs like Notts County and Carlisle, um, <laughs> new places to visit. It was yeah. all very new and exciting once you got over the devastation of the year before. Yeah, absolutely, it was. Um, I can remember, I think I went to Crawley, I think, this season. Brilliant. Which was one of our few defeats. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it's just like such a wound up. <laughs> so I thought, I'll be a good away day. And of course, we're winning. We're winning for fun this season. <laughs> I picked the one game where we lost on the road. Um, so, I mean, this is Kenny Jackett's first season, right? Because I went, I remember I was in the, I, everyone says you remember where you were when you found out Dean Saunders got fired. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I was in the Wolves club shop and I was, I was considering whether what, to Getting buy. a shirt with Saunders for life on the back. <laughs> I was like, well, I was, I was looking at this shirt. I was considering, I was about to buy this shirt. And, uh, and then there was like a kerfuffle behind the counter and everyone started chatting. And I was like, what's going on? And they were like, he's gone. We've just sacked Dino. And, and I left without buying the shirt because I wasn't. Sh- I just didn't know what I, I did. I was really discombobulated by the news. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cute. Uh, yeah. I really like that. You might so, be one of the only fans as well that had that feeling <laughs> at that news. So it, 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 I just remember it being a very dramatic moment for me <laughs> to be, to was, be uh, there was, while it was happening. <laughs> was Saunders in there spending the last of his, his merchandise points? <laughs> Tino was getting his discounts in while he still had it. <laughs> That's a yeah, good Kenny point. Was, um, Kenny was appointed quite. I think it was quite early. I think it, I think it was still May when he was appointed. Yeah. Um, with some, there was some, <laughs> there were some interesting names on that list, and I remember the Express and Star did a, did a fan poll at the time as to who they wanted to take over, and I think Owen Coyle, wasn't it? You know. Um, and there was some um, there were some obscure names on that list. I mean, well, Steve Davis was on there as well, wasn't he? Who's was now Wolves' under eighteen coach, was then manager at Crew. Um, but Kenny was the one that they wanted, and obviously there were so many changes to make, and so many senior pros that they decided they wanted to get rid of. And if you remember at this time, players like Kevin Doyle, Kevin Foley, Stephen Ward, Carl Henry. You know, really good, loyal servants of the club were basically bombed out and yeah. given a different dressing room and told they were no longer required or welcome. So well, on, they were given a different dressing room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they were, yeah. the the dressing room at the training ground for the first team is kind of what is a big room that they all had lockers in and not their numbers are on the lockers, so they all sit in the same place. Whereas the academy players down the other end. They're kind of like more the size of change rooms that you probably used when you played as a teenager. They're kind of just two benches along either side. Yeah. So academy and under 23s. Under 23s have a room 
that's theirs, but it is more in that style. So it's kind of seen as a big thing when you get into the first team dressing room. You know, you get your own locker, you get a proper peg, suddenly you've made it. But because they had all these players they wanted to move out, they basically, Kenny Jacket instructed the staff to empty the people's lockers wow. and, and, take, and put them down in one of the rooms down the other end of the corridor, which to some players did not go down very well at all. Well, yeah, I, don't, I don't think they were told about it, were they? I think that was. I think that was the thing. They walked in one day, and they're the. Um, Carl Henry refused. Been moved. Carl Henry went and got his box and went back in and basically told the staff. He told it a story on the old gold club. He was like, "It's, you know, if, if he wants me to move out, he's got to come and talk to me." And the, like, Kenny, that is. He's like, "I'm not. I'm not going anywhere." It was ballsy. I mean, you, you could understand it. With the likes of Roger Johnson and Jamie O'Hara, you know, who'd, who the fans just weren't going to forgive and forget for, you know, alleged transgressions and whatnot, or perceptions. Um, but yeah, the likes of like Kevin Foley and, you know, Mikey yeah. Lindo, um, the really good, honest pros who, who, who really have deep affection for the club and loyalty for the club, but it was just decided it had to be a clean slate, which was ballsy decision you know Kenny must have had balls like watermelons that, that summer making some of the decisions that he did and Kevin Thelwell did and Steve Morgan but obviously it, it was the thing that they needed to do and, and it's kind of set the foundations for what we see today really is w- balls like watermelons the phrase for being brave <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was more for being frustrated um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it more brass balls Whereas, uh, <laughs> is a ball football man is the kind of thing you experience after weeks of lockdown? <laughs> I mean, he's he's probably moved away from his wife temporarily while settling in with Ramses. I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, should be good answer. And that was a good tackle, actually, to take us away from the subject we were yeah. talking about, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, moments like that is when Mikey does a swift pivot back towards talking about the football. <laughs> the, that was that was a proper League One challenge, if ever I saw one. Well, we should mention that guy there because we've seen him score a couple of goals in this game, Lee Griffiths, mm. who uh, I I mean at this point I kind of thought this is surely he's going to be the guy that fires them straight back up because he he'd signed earlier, hadn't he, Tim? But he'd been out on loan. Yes. Yes, it was seen as an opportunity going down to League One for a few youngsters on the fringes that hadn't played in the championship to now become focal parts of the team. So people like Matt, Matt Doherty, Danny Bart, Zeli Ishmael, who people had talked about as a wonder kid for a few years. You know, he started in the team. And Lee Griffiths, who I think many thought were... Where the hell was he in the championship season, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. A prolific striker. But I, I think, Mikey, you might know, but I think he was generally kind of homesick and ends up leaving to return to Scotland in... I was January, say he goes anyway. in January, doesn't he? Yeah. But only after scoring a sh- yeah a shed load of goals. But like you talk about the um, the bomb squad element to this because you can still see that Kevin Doyle is still playing at this point. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, I think Kevin Foley played a few times. Doyle played, yeah, and I think uh, Wayne Hennessy was still in and around it as well, wasn't he? You know, the idea because it's because they're all on such massive wages that that to now get rid of them. Um, in League One and try and get a decent transfer fee for them in League One you know wasn't going to be easy so well so the story goes as well and I, I've got had this from a couple of people and Roger Johnson talked about it on his episode of Old Gold Club in order to go out on loan the players or at least some of the players were told that they had to take an additional cut in wages so if the team they were going to were paying 50% they Wolves only wanted to pay them 25% at the time. Oh, wow. On that kind of basis. That's what Roger Johnson claims. And I've heard it from one or two others. I don't know whether it was everybody was affected or just the real high earners. Well, yeah, it was just it was a massive cost-cutting exercise, wasn't it? And it was, it was also a PR exercise. I don't know if you remember that summer, all the players were like running around Wolverhampton as part of their daily training. They had this thing where they ran around the city centre and through the subway and all this stuff, and it was all about trying to reconnect with the fan base. Oh my goodness me, who was that? Cassidy. Was oh, no. Um. Yeah, obviously at the end of the last season, which I don't imagine we'll ever 
see the light of day in a season review. Um, you had fans coming on the pitch for the last game and smashing up the dugout and then telling Johnson and O'Hara to do one at Brighton yeah, on the last game yeah, of the season. Yeah, yeah. So so to go from that to a unified club, you know, took some doing really, but um, but they, they did a great job. Never say never with season reviews, mate. There, is, there isn't a season going that we wouldn't review. <laughs> Bring it on. Oh, what a, what a handsome young man. Sigurd Arson. I think the, the, main, the main senior pro that they really needed to keep was Sacco. And, um, and I, think, I think he had a couple of wavering moments where he might have nearly left. But generally, he just got on with his job. He and did, didn't he? Yeah, he was superb this season. And we, showed, we were talking over the top of it, but Kevin McDonald came in and what, what a signing that was. Oh yeah, and it, especially if you consider that he wasn't their first choice. Oh really? Their choice. There was a guy who went from Crew to Leeds. Uh, what's his name? Tim might remember. I'll look it up in a second. But he was like the guy that was chased all the summer, and eventually, I think he chose Leeds over over Wolves, and so they just went out and got McDonald. Well, I think I think they found out McDonald had a, a quite a low release clause, didn't they? Wasn't it only was it two fifty thousand for McDonald? Anyway, it's daylight robbery or whatever it was. Yeah, great signing. Great, great signing. I'm to his left. Alexander leaves it. Adams. So, Luke Murphy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Crawley have snatched it late on. An equaliser against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And that goal has been coming. There was always um, an element in this season. This is the thing about being the absolute big fish. Every team that came to Molyneux, it's like... That's the big it sounds game. terrible. It's like, yeah. it's like when it's Cup it's final, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then for the home game, they'd always get their biggest attendance of the season, wouldn't they? Yeah, you know, the big team coming to town. Lee Griffiths. So, so that's um, tough to deal with, really, week in, week out. But that's why they—that's why they needed some like strong characters in the squad. People like um, Sam Ricketts, who's um, who was made captain straight away. I think. Club captain. I was going to say yeah. Ricketts was captain, wasn't he? So who we got? We got Ricketts, uh, Danny Bart, Richard Stearman still at the Stearman, back. Stearman, yeah. Scott Goldborn comes in at left back. Yeah. So Stearman had gone out on loan to Ipswich the previous season, so he'd kind of avoided the being tarnished, I think, by the relegation. Yeah. For the first fixture there in This was a great day, by the way. Brilliant day. This was the so this was the first time that Wolves had ever played against Lee Hughes. <laughs> since um, since something happened, which yeah. you know, like, just Google it, kids, Google it. Um, and Lee Griffiths did Lee Hughes's famous celebration there in the corner. <laughs> um, what are our thoughts on the purple kit? Like it. I've got Kevin Foley's from that Bristol City game we just saw hanging on my wall. Have you really? Yeah. Um, Washed. Yeah, well, I don't think he actually wore it. <laughs> I don't think he got on, but I've got that shirt. Tre- a treasured memento for uh, for Foles there. <laughs> yeah, was that, was that hard for him for him to part with? Was it? That's why, like when I said, when I said to Mikey, him, once, I've, got, I've got you something really special, Mike. Yeah, yeah. How much, it, how much you mean to me? It was like Foles can I have a shirt, and he's like, "Do you want a gold one or anything?" And I was like, eh, "No, surprise me." <laughs> it's shown quite a lot of action already. The purple uh, kit. I seem to be wearing it quite regularly. I mean, it's a little bit out there. I quite like it. I wouldn't wear it. I wouldn't wear it in public. <laughs> but I don't mind. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Yes, Scotty Goldborn. Why are they standing on little rubber rings? Is that something they still do? Balance. I don't know. And his wife Maureen and other family members paid their own tribute in front of the North Bank before the game with Walsall. Goldborn went straight into the starting lineup for the first fixture in over 10 years against the club's local rivals. Wow, we. I mean, like, that's the thing about You are right about this season. It's like, there's a, there's a certain novelty to it. Yeah. As, as long as it, 
it went well. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? like, like, yeah, you don't you don't want to get used to playing Carlisle. No, exactly. But if you know it's just for a season, and it's kind of like, oh, we're getting to play Port Vale and Warsaw again, and it's like, but this isn't, you know, we're on our way back. Like now, looking at it, knowing that we go up convincingly, then it's yes. like this is a really fun season. Yeah, but you you want to be able to look down on these teams, don't you? Do you know yeah. What I mean? Yeah, but this we is were, the thing know. that, like, for for a long part of this season, it wasn't fun in and around it. It really wasn't because you could. There was well, always easy, was it? no. Well, there was always this pressure. Yeah. That even when they were winning games, like obviously that one we just saw where Lee Griffiths scores a last minute penalty against Crawley. You know the reaction. It's not like oh they won, they won it late. It's like should have won by more. Of course, yeah. We nearly didn't beat Crawley. Yeah. And that and that's that kind of was there for a long, long period. The hangover from what had gone on in the two years before took a long old time to shake. Yeah, I guess it, that's it. It's it's because we can look at it now in context as being like this was the start of everything, you know. Uh, And it's like, can he still building at this point? You mentioned Ken McDonald's got Goldborn coming in. Like, I'm pretty sure we're not at the stage yet where um, James Henry and Michael Jacobs have arrived yet. Yeah, Dicko as well. Yeah, Dicko. Well, Dicko, Dicko kind comes of in. comes in in the weird swap for Lee Griffiths, really, isn't it? Griffiths, Clark, Griffiths went out. Um, Casty went out. Return, yeah. Oh God. Matty Doherty's in there still, <laughs> is he? He's in there now. Yeah, this is kind of Doc's technically, I guess, kind of breakthrough bit. But he doesn't. When Goldborn comes in, Ricketts goes to right back. So Clark comes back in January, doesn't he? I think. Yeah. Sh- I mean, it, sh- it should have been Easter Sunday, really, if it was going to be. Uh, no, Easter Monday. No, yeah, Easter Sunday. Sorry, if it was going to be really true to him. <laughs> Let's not start going down the religious route again. <laughs> We've already been warned off I'm certain saying, topics. It was, gl- it was a glorious resurrection. This is why we're end. This is why season one's ending because <laughs> we keep going down these taboo subjects. <laughs> Normally it's parry. Hey, I'm on my best behaviour today. Once we finish discussing balls like watermelons. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was weird. So you had you had like Johnson loaned from League One to the Premier League. I think didn't didn't Stephen Ward go to the Premier League on loan as well? Uh, championship with Brighton. That's kind and of then, mental, isn't it? There's not many situations yeah. where you get League One loan into the Premier League. Yeah, and doesn't doesn't Hennessy go straight to Palace on loan as well? Um, yeah, I think so. Where does, Doyle, where, does, where does Doyle go? QPR. Red, QPR, yeah. Before eventually ending up at Colorado Rapids, doesn't he? Which is also where Jack Price ended up. Yep, and Hello. Neil Emblem's on the coaching staff. Yeah, because I've got a Colorado Rapids shirt. <laughs> Off the of back of when Jack Price went out there. <laughs> I'm a sucker for yellow T-shirts. And when, I, when, when Jack Price moved to Colorado Rapids... I'll have a little Google of Colorado Rapids. Saw like the the connection, like a few Wolves boys ended up that way, <laughs> and ordered myself a shirt. I've never worn, but it's still in my wardrobe. <laughs> I like my de facto North American team. <sighs> so you've never worn it. It's like a collector's item. Oh, okay. Truth be told, I ordered a large. <laughs> Here we go. I ordered a large. I'm sure you must do this as well. You think, oh, well, I'll get myself into. I should be a large, really. I shouldn't be an extra large, but I, I'm an extra large, and uh, so it's just too tight. Uh, you know, it's not a flattering. It's not a flattering cut. Uh, so is, this one of the, is it one of them ones where you blame the sizes? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Absolutely. <laughs> it's certainly not the late '90s, early 2000s baggy. <laughs> no, exactly. Baggy generosity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, it's a different era, isn't it? Now you need to kind of—they're quite tight fit in that. You have to factor that in. <laughs> what do you think of the gold shirt this season? Yeah, I quite like it. Is what was it? What house the sponsor? Yeah. What house? Yeah, and Puma, obviously Puma shirt. Uh, I think it's got a slightly weak collar. 
It's got like the two. It's got like the two stripes at the co in the collar, hasn't it? Uh, rather than like the V-neck. So that's the only bit I'm not a fan of. But otherwise, there's not much to argue with. Pume get a lot right when it comes to wolf shirts. Colours maybe a touch orange if I'm going to be picky. Yes, I think you're right. Oh, hello. Oh, yes, please. Oh, yes, please. Look at that. <laughs> it's like League One's like early 90s championship football. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Or was it with a hand? Graham Turner. Looks like it was. Taylor's been sent off. Handball right on the line. Bakary Sacco. No messing about. Six minutes left. Sacco strikes a wall. I mean, Sacco is way too good for League One. I mean, that's too good for the championship. That's it. I was just thinking, imagine being a League One defender, lining up thinking you've got to deal with him. Must have been a really weird season for him. To United side struggling under new manager David Weir. It's like you know when you're a kid and like you were playing another school and you found out they had a player who played for the town. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, they've they've got Johnny Roberts. He plays for the town. <laughs> and, then, and like the the only kind of match plan would be get the ball to him. <laughs> and then he'd just dick three players and scored. I mean, like, like that was always like that's what it must have been like. Like Bakri Sacco definitely plays for the town. And once again, Carla K May is keeping Wolverhampton Wanderers in this match. Griffiths, oh, and it's. I think I think Sacco ahead. scores an awesome goal in this game, if I remember correctly. So are you are you commentating on all this season then? Uh, Not every game. Um, I was working for what was Beacon Free Radio. I think I did this game, but it was one of those things where um, I'd often do away games at this point because Tom Ross would do one of the away games, I'd do the other, and because they were the one. Oh yeah, there you go. Look at that. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Two goalkeepers doesn't save that. <laughs> Two League One goalkeepers. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of, a lot of the home games, I, I wasn't there. But I did quite a few of the away games and the important ones. So when we get to the, it, um, I did crew and Leighton Orient at the end of the season. What was the worst ground you went to? You, are you going to tell us? Um, I don't know, actually. I mean, I'd done a lot of them when I worked covering MK Dons. Yeah. So it wasn't that, wasn't that different to me. So which one was really terrible? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think. You always worry about other fans listening, don't you? That's what I always find interesting. No, no, I mean, no. I think he worries about me, me tweeting it more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> Bristol Rovers is terrible from a media point of view. Why is that? Just because it's got about four media seats. Mm. And it's that thing of... Uh, this. It's like... Um, like and Tim will know this from when Tim started like in Kenny Jackett's third year when things were really rubbish and we were kind of you know solidly lower end mid table drawing nil nil at home most weeks yeah like no national media were bothered whatsoever but when you're the big team in league one lots of extra reporters get sent to cover them because no matter what happens to Wolves in every game in this this week, this season, week by week, it's a story. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like with Sunderland now. You know, everybody everybody keeps an eye out for how they're doing, whether they win or lose. Yeah, and that's the, and that's the thing. And it, someone once told me once that um, at Sky, they the reason they like to put Leeds and Wolves on a lot, especially when they went down to League One and stuff. It's because fans of other clubs like to see them potentially lose. 
Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. I don't know if that's true or not, but the reputation is there. Yeah, I don't mind watching Leeds lose, necessarily. Is Kevin Doyle still scoring? We're, we're a more popular team than like. But if you think this, you know, I, I was, there's fans of four of them. Club, aren't we? Fans of four other Midlands clubs <laughs> that would love to see Wolves getting turned over by a League One team. I think I think it's different now with Wolves in the, Wolves doing so well in the Premier League. They're sort of everyone's favourite second team. It certainly feels that way. Oh wow! I've never known anything like it. Like you know, up until uh, you know, the start of this year, I was living in London, and, and the amount of people who wanted to chat about Wolves to me never never felt more popular in my life. <laughs> it's like an amazing time to be a Wolves fan. Yes, Carl. Oh, I, 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 I love a, a penalty save celebration. I, you know, when they when they just stand there and point at the defenders to go and stand in line or whatever, that's boring. You, it's, it's their goal, effectively, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Horrible colours going on with the Notts County strip here. <laughs> The seats in the stand look terrible as well. Look at that, they're all different colours. Is it is Notts County the oldest club in the football league? If I made that up. Got relegated last year, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, got relegated. They, I think they were. Blimey, look at the crowd for this. This isn't a league game, is it? Yeah, I know Johnson's paint trophy. Oh, you're right. It's Lee Griffiths. That's how close I mean, we're getting a lot of highlights for it, considering it's a nil-nil. <laughs> <laughs> it's the big, the big competition. There we go. Will they give us all of the penalties? That's the question. It's because it was clearly on telly. Yeah. We're getting all this. Too much elevation. Again, he looked confident when he strode up. He's genuinely gutted. Here comes the experienced Kevin Foley. Wolves need to hit back here. Kevin Foley! Oh, Foles. Good lord. <laughs> Are they just showing all the misses? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It's a bit bleak, isn't it? Home debut for Wolves tonight. They need this. Henry kept out by Fabian Spice. Do you remember when we watched that one at Rotherham and it was 4 4 and they never showed mm. any of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish we'd gone yeah. back to that. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, that was pretty bleak viewing, wasn't it? Kept out by Fabian Spice. <laughs> not, the, not the last time Wolves have had a Spice problem. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh. uh, I wasn't expecting that connection to come up during this during this season review. <laughs> but there you go. That's Lee Griffiths. <laughs> he was there to greet him. So Griffiths went back, he went back to Celtic, didn't he? Uh... Was it Hibs? Was it Hibs first? But then he, he started slamming him in every week in Scotland, didn't he? He did, yeah. He kind of flourished up there, didn't he? I think it was I think it was just a homesickness thing. I think he think he just never really settled in England. Danny Bartz. This is Lee Griffiths. Never in doubt. Because you think of how many goals he went on to score, mm -hmm. and like he sh they should have just been, could have been like a thirty goal, yeah, season yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. League That's one what he, he was scoring thirty or forty in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Scored against England as well, didn't he? Yeah, he's, he's a born. He's just one of those, you know, he's a born goal scorer, isn't he? One of them at like championship Scottish football yeah. level. Yeah. And he would add to his tally against Oldham, making it five in five games and nine for the campaign as Wolves swept aside the perennial League One side. 
the box there. It's making it difficult for them to get out of their own half. It's a good strike. Yeah, Kenny, um, Kenny Jackets won over the fans pretty quickly. I mean, I know that well, they were winning every week, weren't they? Pretty much, but it wasn't like it wasn't like a lovable manager like Mick. Do you know what I mean? It's more it's more respect, like yes. proper respect. Yeah, because he is. doesn't come out with the with the with the funny quotes in the media, does he? He's very very straight laced, very business like, very professional. He was the man the they done. needed. Yes. It was like the right man at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. S- steady hand on the tiller. A good footballing man. Like ruthless when he needed to be. Yeah. yeah. Like he didn't want people hanging around who weren't very happy. He was quite willing to completely bomb them out. What a good goal that is, by the way. It's a great goal. Oh. Yeah, it's sort of a bit like I was going to say you too, but maybe like <laughs> ma- but the, Kenny Jackets but, but, like you too, but not quite as successful. Maybe like hang on, Patrol. like the band or yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you said you two, I was like, what? Me and Tom? <laughs> I don't think we share anything you know, with the, Kenny you know, Jackets because you know what you're going to get from him. It's quite like soft rock, but it gets the job done. And St- you're stereophonics. Gonna enjoy, you're going to bloody enjoy it, you know. What, what about the stereophonics? Yeah, that kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, Snow Patrol. Kenny Jacket is Snow Patrol. Well, you know what I mean, though. You know what I mean. I'm not that. I'm not a big enough fan of Snow Patrol to agree with you here. I don't know. Like, I don't know whether this is a diss on Snow Patrol or Kenny Jacket. I, I can't work out which way around it is. <laughs> it's, it's a compliment for the for the both of them. I think I think they both both appreciate it in equal measure. Probably, but probably a fan of each other's work. <laughs> Does Kenny Jacket listen to Snow Patrol? That's what you guys need to find out for the next season review. <laughs> the month came to a close against last season's surprise Capital One Cup finalist, Bradford City. Look at that bench. <laughs> Amazing. There it is. Awesome read. This is De Vita! De Vita again! Bradford City hit the front. Oh, I did, I, I did a commentary on this game, right? And um, the press box is really high on the big stand on the far side from the camera. And so, I think Carl Ikemi did a clearance and it was going to land right on top of us. Like, it was literally, it was going to land on top of Tomo. And so I launched up and punched the ball. <laughs> No way. Yeah. What, while on air? <laughs> yeah. While commentating, because Tomo wasn't paying attention, it was going to hit him bang on the head. So I had to launch up and literally proper, like, fist punch, punch the ball back down the stand. I was really chuffing myself. Did people did you, turn around and applaud you? Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's like and a did, dream. Did you commentate on yourself as you did it? <laughs> it's Burroughs. Burroughs eyes on the ball. He's launched himself up there. Oh, that's a great clearance. Bang. <laughs> Tomo, talk us through that. What did you see? <laughs> Tomo, Tomo claimed I should have caught it or headed it back. I mean, that is the dream. That is literally a dream. Like, you know, never in my life... You know, even well, it's one of the you know the first things you feel as a kid when you go to a football ground is is the ball gonna? Am I gonna be able to catch the ball? You you've lived that dream. Well, I didn't catch I had, it. I had well you split know. second decision. I catch it or or just hit it. <laughs> I'm just gonna swing. I was always too far up the stand, Cullis, to stand the chance. And also, it never have got past fat back. <laughs> yeah. so that's too wide a barrier. Imagine the ripple if it hit her back. <laughs> Would lose the ball. <laughs> um, Leighton Orient were flying this season as well. Bloody hell. It was like a three-horse well. three race for most of the season, wasn't it? Stevenage, wow, eh? Sacco's delivery, Kevin Doyle! Thing is, you, you you can't win with games like this. You're just expected to beat Stevenage because they're Stevenage, and unless unless you do it handsomely or convincingly, it's probably a little bit underwhelming. Yeah. 
That's what I mean. Like, there, it wasn't fun, for, especially for the first half of the season. Yeah, it, it was fun later on with 10k to MK and Carlisle at home and winning the title and stuff like that. Rotherham, obviously. Um, I mean, I'm not discouraging people to to stop watching this first half of the season, but you know, <laughs> it wasn't as good as the second half. <laughs> Which, because it, it is strange though, because barring the Warsaw game, they did just keep on winning. They did, but 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 they weren't ten points clear at the top, were they? I think. No. I think they're in third as late as kind of January, maybe even February. But also, you want to keep watching regardless of the results because we want to find out what Spears is going to compare Kenny Jacket to next. <laughs> <laughs> he's had so far, he's had balls like watermelons, and he's like Snow Patrol, so. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Like, you know, you know what you're going to get with Snow Patrol. It's, it's, it's four minutes of generally quite, quite dreary. You know, three chords. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chasing cars put... was one of the most played songs ever on radio. Yeah, I, I refuse to believe that they wrote it over yeah. Kenny's brief period as Watford was, manager. It was because so, it was so vanilla that everyone could associate with it. Against Carlisle. Spears. There he is, nodding nod along to a uh, bit of chocolate there. <laughs> so was oh wow, what a goal! Look at that. Was this when um was this when O'Hara was reintroduced, Mikey? Yeah, he played one game or something, didn't he, to prove that he was one? fit? I'm sure he might have he might have featured at Bradford. Yeah, he came back in very briefly, didn't he? On the bench at Bradford. And Have you ever had him back in on the old old goal club? Or no, I tried to contact him. He, he kind of Dave Edwards me and didn't reply. <laughs> uh, Hara comes off the bench in this game. I remember it being a big deal at the time. Came off the bench against Stevenage in the last one. Carlisle again, labouring to get the ball clear. And this time the post is struck. The post saves Carlisle. Oh. And then Gillespie does. I mean, that, it was amazing to be playing back at stat grounds like this. Like, I remember that mm. it was very similar when I went to Crawley, like, ter- like to be back in the terraces. Uh, it was, you know, something exciting about it, you know, these tiny grounds with terraces around it. But this is one of those where I remember fans kicking off massively on the radio phone-ins, going all the way to Carlisle on a Tuesday night and not winning... You can imagine what yeah. people were saying. Yeah, but, you know, you look at the amount of big clubs that get stuck in this division. Not yeah, saying Sunderland, it's right. <clears throat> Sunderland's the obvious one. I'm saying it's wrong, Mikey. I'm saying it's wrong. Like, <laughs> Leeds, Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United. They've all got stuck down there. And Well, that's you know. that's why the, uh, you know, probably the Kenny Jacket doesn't get the credit he deserves. I think he does. Which is maybe why he's not Snow Patrol. <laughs> I think he does now. There's there's a widespread respect. Maybe he's more like a cold play. Oof. Okay, okay, here we go. No, you know, it's, it's, it's quite it's quite fashionable not to be a fan, but you know that what they put out generally pretty good. Well, I'd say we not, but not everyone knows who Snow Patrol are though. And I think that's the same with Kenny Jacket. Not everyone knows who he is. Cold play are headliners, aren't they? Let's be honest. You're sticking Coldplay on a Sunday night at Glastonbury. You're not putting Kenny Jacket on a Sunday night on the pyramid stage. He's doing a support slot on the other stage, isn't he? You know. Yeah. <laughs> He's not, you know. I'm going to start going through my uh, Apple Music account to see if I can find a more fitting... Analogy for Kenny Jacket. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm sticking by the stereophonics. <laughs> well, what do you mean about that? About that collar? It's weird, isn't it? It's odd. Yeah. It's like those jumpers that you can get with a fake T-shirt underneath. Exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Oh, I bet Spears has got a couple. I was just going to say, I bet you have. Bloody hell! Don't throw that at me. I did back in the day. Didn't we see Carl Henry wearing one in a previous yes, season? We did. Yes. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Maybe that's what inspired this strip. But yeah, it's like if they'd have just committed to a V-neck, I think you're on for a pretty decent strip there. But it, it, it's too busy around the collar. 
clean lines on the collar, please. That's all you need. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fussy collar, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's too much. Athlete. Oh, hello. That's not a bad one, you know. <laughs> I wonder what you meant then. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do oh, show it. Okay, I've got a good one. What about Gomez? <laughs> right? No, Gomez had like one semi hit. Yeah, that's, they're, a bit, they're a bit niche. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he backs Lundell has put it in. What a moment for him! His first Wolves goal. And they have the breakthrough. 14 minutes from time. And similarly with this strip, that white stripe coming off the collar is unnecessary. I think, like, you take that white stripe away. And again, it's a much better kit. I think always less is more when it comes to kit design. It's outlandish, though. I mean, what, I don't know what they were smoking when they came up with, with the purple idea. I, know. I, d- I doubt it was Kenny's idea, put it that way. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Kenny wouldn't be up for that. Do managers get a final sign-off on strips? No. With cup competitions done for the season, the beautiful South. concentration is put on promotion. And the test against another team vying for the top spot, Brentford. Not successful enough to be the beautiful South. Is that controversial? I mean, I say like, I mean, we're skipping over the FA Cup and this goalless draw here, so uh, <laughs> we, keep, we can you can be as controversial as you want. <laughs> Excellent pass, and good is going for that near post. Couldn't quite get the better of Button. Wolves again. It's Griffiths again. And Button with a big left hand. Make sure that didn't get past him. What sort of sized houses are we averaging this season, do you reckon, at the Molyneux? About 20,000, probably. A little bit more. I don't know, you know. One's towards the end, obviously. Gets bigger and bigger. They f- yeah, they fill it a couple of times towards the end. Trying to pick out Donaldson and McCormack. And that's a fantastic stop from Akimi. McCormack crashing in. Doves. It's not bad. Are you two going through your eye? Are you going through your Apple Music? Is that what you two no, are doing here? Definitely not. That's what I found out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we, we're in the right area, aren't we? When you say Snow Patrol, you say Doves, you say so, Athlete. Yeah. Pr- predictable saying, soft rock, but it's very effective what it does. Yeah, exactly. And they're not going to headline Glastonbury, but you might see them on the Friday night at Latitude. That's and they what still, I think. Yes, and they can still fill a stadium, saying. you know, towards the end of the season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Against Carlisle, yeah. once they know that we're going up. <laughs> oh, the goalkeeper's made a huge error. <laughs> He's kind of got the most football English football manager name in the history of English football managers as well. It's kind of like if I was a careers advisor at school and you someone said, the next kid's coming in, his name's Kenny Jacket. Like, you'd say, you're going to be a football manager one day. Do you know what I mean? It's like the perfect football manager name. Yeah, or a fashion designer. <laughs> ja- jackets, jackets. <laughs> just, I think, just jackets, but with an with an apostrophe. Yes. I'm sure that was a, an idea that we once discussed in the media office as a potential feature. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, yes. I want I wanted it to be like that. Kenny would come in and put a different jacket on. Eighteen games played. And just in the right, and then what? <laughs> don't, don't know. I didn't really think the rest of it through. It was it was more a name, and then come up with the, the theme afterwards. <laughs> Proper partridge, that is. <laughs> we've got jackets, jackets. We've got the Jack Price is right. <laughs> Again, that definitely came up. What's in Danny Bart's bath? <laughs> I'd love to have been a fly on the wall for that. <laughs> Eleven minutes to play. It could be the winner for Peterborough. 
there was uh, someone that contacted the club once that wanted to do lots of social media type videos and they were all like ridiculous ideas that the players would never agree to so I used to send voice notes to a good friend of mine in Tim's called Paul Berry who was in charge of all the media at this point with these kind of random ideas Unfortunately, kind of the most stupid things I could try and come up with. The club would experience back-to-back defeats for the first time as MK Doms took all three points away from Molyneux. I think my... Fa- I, don't, actually, I don't know whether I should say this or not. No, nah, come on, these are always the best stories. Um, one I came up with was... Um, uh, this was not a serious one, by the way. I don't want anyone to hear this and think that we were genuinely discussing this as an idea. Um, but my my favourite one I ever came up with was Carl Ikemi's Wet Dreamies. Oh, wow! Hey. <laughs> Where Carl, Carl would meet supporters to talk through their, <laughs> their issues, <laughs> their nighttime issues. You wanted to turn Carl Ikemi into a sex therapist? <laughs> That's pretty, pretty incredible. <laughs> Carl Ikemi's wet dream is. That's the challenge. Oh, still got it, Wolves. How have they still got it? Fired over. <laughs> Remarkable. <sighs> no wonder they're stopping us from doing more of these. <laughs> <laughs> Too often. Oh, how about that for Reeves? Ben Reeves with a wonderful hit. I didn't realise Kevin Doyle played this much in this season, you know. Yeah. It's surprising, isn't it? He leaves in January, doesn't he? Yeah. But I just looked it up. It's like right at the end of the month. I just always assumed that he'd kind of gone for the whole year. Yeah, in January they bring in Dicko and Clark, both in January, was it? Yeah. What a signing Dicko is, eh? Absolutely. Do you remember when he was um do you remember when he was on loan the season before this? Yeah. Well it's this game that Dicko has an absolute storm yeah. for Rotherham. And he only scored one in the loan spell in the season before. Well he was a he was a winger, I remember, on loan from Wigan, I think. Makes it Wigan or Blackpool, something like that, wouldn't it? This was the old, um, this was the old Colin Lee philosophy of just buying yeah. a player because he scores Some, against you. Someone who scores against you, stick his name in the book. Like Tony Dinnan. See you in January. <laughs> 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 that should be like you know, like uh, we signed him on a Bosman. It should be like we got him on a Dinning. <laughs> it's like <laughs> whenever a club signs a player who scored a few times against them yeah we signed him on a dinning it was, it was a real dinning signing do you know what I mean <laughs> I love that they start start negotiations with Newer Dicko <laughs> have you ever heard of Tony Dinning Newer <laughs> there's a touch of Tony Dinning about you lad <laughs> <laughs> Power or Grayson Bakary Power. Wolves have hope here. Oh, fuck. Oh. Is that Snow Patrol? <laughs> yes. Who's phoning you? <laughs> no. I was going to my Snow Patrol discography. <laughs> 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 and therein lies the rub, you see. The Snow Patrol songs don't just spring out at you. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry about that. I thought this was another delivery that you were having. <laughs> I'm doing a I love that. <laughs> I still don't get like you bought the you bought the pack of balls. And yeah. then a week later, got no, yourself a racket. It's taken longer to get here, so I had to play with what I can only describe as a couple of council rackets last week, which uh, had an impact on the quality of the game. Paul Workman always blames his tools. they were back to winning ways. It's 
to make it a very Merry Christmas. Wolverhampton Wanderers and Miami today. I remember being in the um, director's box for this game. Mm. <laughs> they had um, Express and Star had a couple of um, season tickets in there. And um, do you know it's free drink for the whole for the whole afternoon? Unbelievable. Well, like That's alcoholic bad. drinks. Yeah. Yeah, and you can put your orders in at half time. I remember we ordered a couple of double whiskies um, to be <laughs> to, <laughs> to, probably should say that, to be served um, at half time. So the whistle blows, you just get downstairs and your drinks away waiting for you. How the other half live, eh? Bloody hell. Yeah, it's a good afternoon that was. <laughs> I can remember going to uh, the Emirates once in corporate seating. And at half time you go in and there's just tables and tables just covered in pints. And it's just like, help yourself to pints. Yes. And I remember feeling like... I was like, am I the only one from the Midlands here? Because I'm taking about 15 of those. <laughs> everyone, everyone was being so civilised around them. And I was like, what's going on, lads? Do you not realise? Like, what, what's going on? Absolutely mental. Court, hospitality is always weird at football matches. I find. Like, you know, like when you... I've only been a few times, but like... It's kind of like you have the atmosphere of like a wedding reception and then suddenly you're at the football and then you're back into like this weird wedding reception type area. It's always like slightly jarring for me. Do you know what I mean? Like I went, I went to hospitality at QPR and Andy Sinton came out and did a little chat to the Wolves fans and the QPR fans. And then like you suddenly, it suddenly felt like you were at Andy Sinton's wedding a little bit. You have <laughs> like a bit. to Andy Sinton's wedding. <laughs> yeah, it's true actually. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always a slightly, you know, it's not as much fun as going down the pub and then getting yeah. in the stands and having a pie at half time. Was that Ebanks Landell scoring that goal? I think it was. Mikey, were you watching? Sorry, I was still going through my music. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it was, yeah. That's a great goal. I was I was also um, picturing all the thinking like I can't comment about Tim taking advantage of corporate drinks and food because he's seen me at matches all around the country and I'm notorious for nicking loads of free stuff from wherever we go. Yes, you are. <laughs> Perk of the job. At Everton, they have like <laughs> they have this table laid out with loads of different snacks. And I just like keep going past, like putting my coat on, go past again, fill the pockets, just so it feeds me and Tomo for about a month afterwards. <laughs> okay, just before half time, I've got a suggestion. What about instead of a band, what if he's Phil Collins? <laughs> and, and then you could have the album Kenny Jacket Required. Oh, yeah. I don't, oh I don't, yeah, that's this not bad. That's not bad. I don't know why we're stopping this stuff. <laughs> 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 this kind of golden material. This needs to be all year Andre! round. Orient level. A quick free kick has done the trick. Good hunting down, really good hunting down, and Wolves oh. hunting down a second, but the amount of bodies they had in an attempted handball. Yeah. Great effort. So we will take a break. Uh, we will be back tomorrow, perhaps with discussion of what instrument Kenny Jacket is or what type of animal is most like Kenny Jacket. That's all to come in part two. <laughs>